What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to continue on with the 11th episode of our Filament PHP video series where we're going to create a dashboard in Filament PHP using widgets and charts. A dashboard is quite important in admin panels because it provides a quick and easy way to view relevant information and metrics in one place. They basically help to identify trends and patterns in data. Think about the average order price, the total number of users and way more. All of these things are mostly visually shown through widgets and charts. Any filament PHP project shifts with a dashboard page, where you will see two boxes. These boxes are called widgets. And by default, filament PHP allows you to define four types of widgets. It has a stats overview, which is a widget that displays any data, often numbers, as stats in a row. A chart widget, which displays numeric data in a visual chart a table widget, which displays a table on your dashboard, and you can create custom widgets, which we won't cover in this episode. Quick note, widgets can also be placed right above your resource table. We won't be covering that in this episode, but it's good for you to know. Let's navigate to the CLI, because we're going to create our first widget with the help of Artisan, which will be a stats widget. So let's say PHP Artisan make colon filament dash widget, we're going to name it stats overview and we're going to add a dash dash stats option of overview. It's asking us whether we want to add it inside a resource for now. Let's just hit enter because this is an optional option. And it will also prompt you with a question whether you want to create your widget in a dashboard panel or alongside other LiveWire components. We're going to choose the dashboard panel. Now this command has created a new directory and class for us. So let's navigate back to PHPStorm, where you will see that a new widgets directory has been created inside the filament directory. Where right here, you will find a stats overview class. Let me actually close off all the tabs that I have open. All right. Now right inside of the class, you will find a method named getStats which returns an array of stats to be displayed in a stats overview widget. Now we can pass in a key value pair right here of strings, since we need to use the stat component. So well, let's use our stat component and use the make method. Now it accepts a label and a value. The label will basically be the title shown to you. So let's say total customers. And for the value, we're simply gonna pass in 10K. Once we navigate to the browser and refresh our dashboard endpoint, you will see that we have created the simplest widget, which shows the total users, which is 10K. Now we could navigate back and replace our second argument, so the value, with an eloquent query. So let's say customer model, colon, colon, count. Once we navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it, you'll see that the total customers is equal to one, now, if we click on customers, you will see that that is correct. There are some additional information that you could pass into your stat components. Now, let's see which ones you have. We're going to chain the first method, which is the description method. So let's say that the description is increase in customers. We can add a description icon which will basically be a hero icon. So let's say hero icon dash M dash arrow dash trending dash up. We can add a color of the hero icon. So let's say color is success. And we can pass in the chart method. The chart method on a stat component allows you to display a chart along with the numeric value of the stat. The method takes an array of numeric values, which will be used to populate the chart. So let's pass in a couple random numbers. So give me a moment. All right. Once we navigate back to the browser and refresh it, you will see that we have improved our stat component quite well. Now by default, the stat will refresh every five seconds. So if you quickly create a user and navigate to the browser within five seconds, the counter will still be one. Now, I personally think that within huge applications where there are quite some queries, this could be customized and refreshed to let's say every 15 seconds. To update that, we need to overwrite a property. So let's navigate back to PHPStorm 
Now, right above our get stat method, we're going to define a protected static optional string named polling interval, where we're going to set the value equal to 15s for seconds. You could even disable it completely, where you need to set the value equal to null, but that's completely up to you. And there's one more property that I want to cover, which is the protected static bool named is lazy, where I want to set the value equal to true. By default, widgets are being lazy loaded, which you can disable with this property. Now you could even place multiple widgets next to each other, where you simply need to create a new stat right inside of the array. So let's name this one total products, where the value will be product model, colon, colon, count. We're going to change the description method to it, which shows total products in app. We have the description icon, which will be hero icon dash m dash arrow dash trending dash down. The color will be something else this time. So let's say danger. And we have the charts, which I will actually copy from above. Now let's actually create one more before we navigate to the browser and refresh it. Well, let's say stat make pending orders where the query will be order model where the status is equal to our order status enum pending and we're going to change the value method to it. And let's actually copy paste the description, description icon, color and chart. Well, I actually forgot to chain the count method on our query. Navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, where you will see three charts. The first one is the total customers. We have the total products and we have depending orders. Now let's move on to the second widget that we can create, which is a chart. And once again, a chart is a widget that displays numeric data in a visual chart. It allows you to identify trends and patterns in data making it a useful tool for analyzing information. So let's navigate back to iTerm. Now let's create a new widget by saying PHP Artisan make me a new filament dash widget named products chart. And we're gonna add a dash dash chart to it. Right here, you will see that we have the option to create it inside a resource or oh, let's just hit enter. We're gonna place it inside a dashboard panel. And right here, you will see that we have the option to choose between five different types of charts. For this example, let's choose a line chart and you can modify this later on. So don't worry about it. Let's navigate back to PHP Storm. Let's open our newly created chart, which is the products chart. And right here, you will see one additional method, which is the get type method, where you can change the type of the chart. For now, we're simply going to stick to a line chart. So let's set it up inside the get data method. We're going to define a data sets, which is equal to another array, where we're going to pass in an array with data with key value pairs. So let's say label is equal to blog posts created. We have the data, which is once again, an array with random integers. So let's add a couple values right here. And then right outside of our data set, we're going to add the labels, which is also equal to an array. And the values right here are strings that represents the label for the X axis of the chart, which in this case are the months of the year. So let's say January, February, March, April, May, and let's actually add one more. Let's say June. If we navigate to the browser and refresh it, you will see that we have created a pretty cool chart, isn't it? The design has been messed up, but we will cover that in a bit because I first want to show the data from the database. So let's navigate to PHP Storm. Now let's actually create a new method right below the get type method. Let's say private function get products per month. Well, let's type into it to an array. And I'm going to do this relatively quickly because this is just Laravel code and it takes quite some time to cover all the steps that we're going to perform. 
So we're first going to get the current time by defining a new variable named now and setting it equal to carbon, colon, colon, now. We're going to define a new array, or let's say products per month, which is equal to an empty array. Then we're going to define a new variable named months, which is equal to the collect method. It ranges from 1 to 12, and we're going to map it. We need to pass in a callback function, so let's say function, parentheses, but we're going to use our variable now and our variable products per month. We do need to pass in a variable inside the function, which will be one single month. Variables that we're going to use, we're going to add curly braces and hit enter. So we're first going to get the count. So let's say dollar sign count is equal to product, the product model, where month is created underscore at. And we're then going to use carbon again. We're going to parse the now month, but we're going to pass in the month that we have defined per loop. We're then going to format it where the format will be years dash M. And then we're going to chain the count method to it. Then every time it loops, we need to add the month into the products per month. I made a typo right here. All right, this looks better. So what we can do is basically say, well, products per month brackets is equal to the count. And we're going to return now month. We're going to once again pass in our variable month and chain the format method to it where the format will be capital M for the month. Now on our month variable, we're going to chain the to array method to it because we're simply going to use the array inside our get data method. So outside of it, we're going to return an array where we have two key value pairs. The first key is products per month where the value is products per month. And we have the months itself, which will be variable months. Then we need to update the get data method where we're first going to define a variable named data, which we're going to set equal to this get products per month. We're going to replace the actual data right here, the array, with our variable data brackets products per month. All right. And then we're going to replace the labels with data brackets months. Once we navigate to the browser and refresh it, you'll see that we have made a typo right here. So let's scroll down for a moment because the where month needs to be a month with th. Let's navigate back to Google Chrome where you will see that it has defined a pretty nice chart. Well, we actually created all the products in August and September, but that doesn't matter. Just like the sort of the navigation items, we have a sort property that we could overwrite on our widget. So let's navigate back and let's open our stats overview, scroll up. Now let's define a new property. Let's say protected, static, optional int, named sort, which is equal to two. Now let's copy it because we need to place it inside our products chart as well. Right above our gate data method, we're going to paste it, but the integer value will be equal to three. If we navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it, you'll see that the sort of two has been placed right above the sort of three. Now I want to create one more chart where I want to show the product status in a bar chart, which is also pretty cool, I think. So let's navigate back to iTerm. Now let's perform a clear right here. Uh, let's say PHP artisan, make me a new filament dash widget. Uh, let's name it orders chart dash dash chart. I made a typo because it is chart with an H. All right. We're not going to create it inside a resource. It is for the dashboard panel. And this one will be a bar chart. Let's navigate back to Google Chrome. Oh, let's open our orders chart. Oh, let's paste in the sort that we have, which will be the same sort as our product sort because we want to place them next to each other, right? So let's navigate back and say tree, where if I refresh it, you'll see that they have been placed right next to each other. Let's navigate back. 
because we need to focus on the get data method, where I want to show the order statuses in a bar chart format. So let's define a new variable named data. Let's set it equal to the order model. We're gonna select the status and we're gonna perform a DB query, which is a raw one where we want to get the count as count. And then we're gonna chain the group by method to it because we're gonna group it by the status and we're gonna pluck the count and the status and we're gonna chain the two array methods to it. All right, inside our return statement, we're once again gonna define a data sets, which is equal to an array, where we're gonna pass in an array with a label of orders. We have data, which will come from array underscore values, our variable data that we have defined right here. And then we're gonna pass in the labels on the bar chart, which will come from our order status enum cases. Pretty cool. Let's navigate back, refresh it, where right here you will see that we have two pending orders. We've got one more left, which is a table widget. Now let's say that we want to show the latest orders in a table format, right below our charts. Let's navigate back to iTerm. Let's perform a clear. Let's say PHP Artisan make me a new filament dash widget named latest orders. And I'm gonna add a dash dash table to it. We're not gonna create a page inside a resource page. It is for the dashboard panel. And as you can see, it has been created successfully. Let's navigate back to PHP Storm, open our latest order. We're first gonna define the sort. So let's say protected static int dollar sign sort is four. And right here, you will find the same table method as we have seen before within our resources. Now, before we define the columns, oh, let's define the query first which will set the query that will be used to populate a table, which will come from our order resource. And we're gonna use the get eloquent query method right here. Then we're gonna chain the default pagination page options method, which will set the number of items that will be displayed per page. In our case, we're simply gonna pass in five. Then we're gonna chain the default sort method to it which sets the default sorting of the table. We're gonna say, look at the created underscore add column and sort it in a descending order. And then we're gonna focus on the columns method, which will take an array of column objects. And I don't want to define it myself, so I'm gonna open the order resource, scroll down to the table methods and copy the text columns that we have, navigate to my latest orders, paste it right here, navigate to the browser or refresh it scroll down where you will see that the styling got a little bit messed up but we can fix this by navigating back to our php storm inside our latest order define another property so let's say protected int pipe string pipe array named column span where the value will be set equal to full if we navigate back refresh it, scroll to the bottom, you will indeed see that it has been full spanned and the latest orders are visible. For now, I want to wrap up this video where we have created our dashboard using widgets, charts, and tables. This was it for today's video. If you enjoy the content and you want to see more, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.